Welcome to the video training series. My name is Dan Dorfmiller. I'm the author of Print Reading for Construction. In this video, we will review Unit 6, Specifications and Building Codes. Hi, I'm Dan, the author. In this video, we're going to explain what is included in specifications, explain why specifications are needed, explain how to find a particular topic within a specification, and understand how building code requirements impact the building process. Specifications are the written statements that define the extent of the quality of work and the materials to be used. They supplement the drawings and they are considered part of the construction documents. Specifications can vary greatly in length from a few pages on a small residential project to volumes of several hundred pages on a large commercial project. They are prepared by individuals who are very familiar with the building process, and this will vary from trade to trade. It's seldom written by just one person. Specifications provide a, the detailed information that cannot be shown in the drawings due to space constraints. Together, the specifications and drawings make up the drawing documentation, or commonly referred to as construction documents or contract documents. Specifications are used by owners, architects, engineers, contractor and subcontractors, material suppliers, including the trade workers constructing the project. Specifications are written using a system called Master Format developed by CSI. CSI stands for the Construction Specifications Institute, which is an organization that maintains standards of construction language used in building specifications and documents. Master Format is a standardized numbering system. There are 50 divisions starting with Division 00, Procurement and Contracting Requirements, and 49 other divisions covering all the trades and materials used in construction. See pages 364 and 5 in the book. Some divisions are reserved for future expansion. This numbering system makes finding information related to project areas of work in materials much more consistent. A complete copy of the divisional CSI numbering and titles can be downloaded at this noted website. The master format uses a six digit system. The first two numbers designate the main divisional area like 03 for concrete. This would be level one. Level 2 and 3 are further breakdowns to the related basic topic, and Level 4 would be used to further break down a specific topic when needed. Specifications are organized into topics within each section. I call this the anatomy of specifications. It starts with related documents. This section lists all other documents with information that is of interest to the given topic, but does not need to be repeated in every division. The documents reference may include a list of drawings or information about pay request, retainage, insurance requirements, prevailing wage, or any other project requirements. The summary section provides an overview of the type of work included under the given specification, but is not necessarily all-inclusive. The related sections identifies other sections that are of interest in the project specification book, such as general conditions, contract documents, insurance requirements, etc. This section lists special definitions that may not be typically understood by the reader. For example, the following definition might be included for clarification. Concrete stain, permanent coloration of existing cured concrete, caused by chemical reaction. Or, for concrete floors, the definition of FF and FL numbering system, referring to floor flatness and levelness. The references section is where the specification can make referenced items part of the contract, such as other reference material and items not specifically included within the specification. For example, standards or documents developed by the American Concrete Institute, ACI, or ASTM International might be referenced. 
These documents can be made part of the specification by simply listing them as a reference. An individual or company working from the specifications must be familiar with this referenced information. Description of work section provides a more detailed description of the work included and covered within the given specification. The quality assurance section covers testing requirements for the project. This section may also list contractor qualifications, such as certifications or years of experience. In addition, mock-ups and samples of the work might be provided in this section, or they could be included or covered under submittals. The submittals section provides samples of the work and product information, such as color charts and technical data information. This is where the owner's representative reviews without obligation the products or materials that the contractor intends to use on the job. Note, they may be additional submittal requirements in the general conditions, so don't forget to review them. The Special Inspections section describes the information about independent lab testing, site visits, and pre-existing conditions to the project. Project conditions are the surrounding conditions and other considerations related to the project are described in this section. For example, there may be information related to traffic control, weather conditions, and protection of the work or surrounding areas. The products section lists all the approved manufacturers or contractors for this scope of work. The term or equal is commonly used referring to the list of products. This simply means that if a product being used by the contractor is not one of the listed, the alternative product must meet the minimum requirements of the listed product, and the contractor must obtain prior approval by the design team before use on the project. Listing out materials is usually a large portion in a specification. The execution section describes how the product is to be installed and or perform. Protection section is specific information about the protection of the work related to this specification section. This information identifies who is responsible and what is required at the time of completion when the work is turned over to the owner. This section of the specification has caused many contractors extra money due to not applying the proper amount of attention to these requirements. Very important to understand and qualify if needed in your proposal. In reference to maintenance, most owners want to know what is required to continue proper ongoing performance of the work installed and may require you to prepare a maintenance manual to be submitted when the project is turned over to the owner. Warranties section addresses the number of years a product is under warranty against material and installation defects. Most warranties are one year, but the warranty period can be listed as being longer under a given specification or under general requirements. The warranty information explains what constitutes a defect and how it should be repaired. As a project is turned over to the owner at the end of construction, sometimes special cleaning and repairs may be required. This section contains information addressing cleanup and repair requirements. Whether you are bidding a specified material item, specification section, or the entire project, it is recommended that you read and become familiar with the information included under general requirements and project conditions in the specifications. It is common to hear material suppliers, subcontractors, and contractors say they were required to perform something they did not include in the bid that cost significant amounts of money. Become familiar with the entire set of documents. This is also helpful when preparing a proposal and a statement of qualifications. Now, let's look at some example specifications. For instance, 1.1a. A says, drawing and general provisions of the contract, including general and supplementary conditions and Division I specification sections, apply to this section. It goes on to say, related sections include, but are not limited to, coordination, 
quality requirements, construction facilities, temporary controls, and closeout procedures. Also says on 1.2, work covered by contract documents, referring to the construction drawings, the work of this project is shown on the drawings and described in various sections of the specifications found in the project manual. The drawings and specifications are complementary and what is required by one shall be binding as if required by all. So you can see by these few statements you better be familiar with the entire set of specifications because by contract you will be held responsible. Another example, Part 1, General. A. Related documents, drawings and general provisions of the contract, including general and supplementary conditions and Division 1 specification sections apply to the work in this section. So, everything that's in Section 1 and Division 1 now applies to this. It goes on to say, the owner requires the contractor to efficiently use resources and energy to the fullest extent possible in the completion of the project. Resource efficient aspects to be considered in the completing this of this project include use of techniques that minimize waste generation, reuse of materials on site where possible, and recycling of waste generated during the construction process. Whoa. Go ahead and try to estimate the cost of doing this one statement. And here's another area of related work specified in other sections and list seven different other sections to look at. And uh, at 1.3 definitions, they give you the definition for supplementary cementitious materials and cementitious, uh, cementitious materials. Note here that bidders are to carefully examine the site and documents to obtain first-hand knowledge of existing conditions. This will relieve the owner of any responsibility related to existing conditions that could have been observed by visiting the site. Substitutions are outlined here and note that they will be identified in an addendum to all bidders. Submittals and shop drawings requirements for materials and construction shall be submitted to the architect and no work may commence until approved by the architect. Here we have bidders qualifications, company and staff requirements, and minimum safety requirements. Remember earlier when we discussed the quality and reference section. Here the architect is pulling into the contract documents all these ACI documents that are now part of the contract documents. And here we have a list of approved products. Also note, there is a concrete pre-construction conference and this isn't free, so you must put money in for it. And here we have performance criteria and tolerances that must be met. And let's not forget cleanup. Almost all specifications call for cleaning up of your own debris. Here it's very specific with consequences if not met. We have just covered a very few examples. We could spend an entire day discussing just specifications. Finding information in specifications can sometimes be difficult. So first, review the table of contents. If you are new to this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to skim or read the entire set of specifications. Yes, you heard me correctly. Page by page, at least skim through the specifications and look for those nuggets of information that might affect your bid and impact the construction of work. I promise you, the owner, architect, engineer, and all the inspectors will be reading them and they will be holding you to every letter of the word. Let's talk briefly about building codes. National building codes are laws and standards specifying requirements for building construction, while local building codes are ordinances stating minimum standards for construction requirements and practices in a given area or community. Like earthquake design requirements would be different in California than in Ohio, or 
depth of footing would be different in Alaska than in Florida. Building codes establish standard construction practices and materials and are enforced by local building officials to ensure that these required standards are met. Building codes impact all aspects of the building design and construction process. Becoming familiar with the requirements of building codes and careful inspection of them is important in all building projects. Also, safety and health standards are laws and standards stating safety and health requirements. Examples of safety and health standards are developed by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, best known as OSHA, to protect the welfare of employees in all occupation types. Green Buildings Practices that started as green are becoming code across the country. Structures built with green materials are healthier and safer for their occupants. The International Green Construction Code, published by the International Code Council, establishes regulations that govern the impact of buildings on their environment and promote sustainable construction practices. Okay, it's time to test your knowledge. Pause the video here and review the material in Unit 6, then answer the questions on pages 97 and 98. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. Pause the video here and read pages 101 to 104, a mock specification. Then answer the questions on pages 99 and 100. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Repause the video and check your answers. Pause here and refer to Sheet 1 of the Sullivan Residential Building in the large print supplements and answer the question on page 105. When complete, continue the video to see the answers. Please note, see free video on my website www.printreading.us or look at YouTube as to how to open the large print supplemental drawings. This will greatly help you in getting them organized. Search Print Reading for Construction. Getting started. Repause the video and check your answers. This concludes Unit 6.